for the last time here in Australia for now. Adam Collins and Jeff Lemon. This is the final word cricket podcast season 15, episode 19. We're still in Sydney, despite the mm-hmm. fact that it's, what, day seven of the test match, which isn't actually a thing. Well, it is a thing. It was a thing a in thing. 1894. It, could, it was uh, a thing in Durban in 1939. Yes. It would have, you still had three days to go <laughs> and probably a rest day. Uh, but it isn't uh, anymore, sadly, although I think we should bring back timeless yeah. tests. Can we get occasion. one? Can we just get one, uh, maybe as a novelty, I don't know, some sort of... Not the hundred and fiftieth anniversary because that you know the hundredth was a five day, but there's I don't mind be... that actually. The sesquicentenary being yeah. timeless to ensure that there's a result. Yeah, maybe the campaign starts here. The campaign starts here. Maybe Brisbane Olympics twenty thirty two twenty thirty nine. We do a hundredth anniversary of the Durban t- timeless <laughs> test match. <laughs> Okay. It'll be the only test cricket being played in South Africa. Hopefully we're not on a cusp of a global conflict in 2039. Yeah. We probably would have had one of those by now, the way things are trending. Mm, we'll yeah, be on the other side of it, hopefully, <laughs> so long as we don't obliterate the planet. You definitely can't rule that out. Um, yeah, I, I don't know I don't know whether anyone's going to be playing cricket in 2039, but we'll see. Uh, Jeff, you're in a hammock. Mm. Now we've got a barbecue behind us. You won't be in a hammock for long, I suspect. I don't know how sustained it'll little be for you to record the whole <sighs> pod there. I've laid in that hammock a fair bit over the years and... Um, it is quite deep, but you're enjoying yourself. I thought it was a novelty. I thought, like, you know, it'd be funny at the start of the video bit if I was just in the hammock. But it's pretty good. I'm not feeling very inclined to get out. <laughs> um, I'm looking up at a perfect blue sky. I mean, yep. they should play cricket in Sydney in early January. This weather, it's <laughs> absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. You'd be, what, 25 degrees, light ocean breeze. Not a cloud in the proverbial or the literal. It's uh, it's a lovely time to be alive. We've got three different views of water upstairs where we're staying. It might dear friends of mine mm. they've got a harbour view at one side out towards Watson's Bay another side and out oh. towards the ocean on the third side I just every time I take their dog for a walk I just feel like I'm going to get arrested people <laughs> will be like you do not belong here <laughs> go back to the scungy inner northern laneways of Melbourne go and do some graffiti art You're, this yeah. is not for you this is not your place I feel like I've, I've snuck in through the back door of Elysium uh, right, so we've got a bit to get through before we reach the, the proper parts of the show, and that'll include Daniel Rasool from Crick Info. Mm-hmm. I, I thought it was right that we say goodbye to Pakistan, and we haven't really done it properly on the pod. No. Daniel out here with Crick Info, so a chat with him. Uh, Australia's women playing in India. We dealt with the Test match a couple of weeks ago, but quite a lot of white ball activity over there. They finished their T20s last night, I think. No, they've got one to go. One to go, mm. my apologies. Uh, there was the wash-up of the Test match at Newlands this time last week, which finished in a day and a half. There's... Chiteshwa Pajara, be still my beating mm-hmm. heart. The rum machine is back in business. There's some Afghanistan politics, funny that. Funny BBL that. update, there's some stuff going on with Zimbabwe and Sri Lanka. It's a busy show. So, um, All right, I'm in the, the way, chair. Yeah, you're in the go. chair, you're back in business. So this is our last show together. We're reverting to Zoom or you know the other program Whatever. we now use yeah. uh, once I get back to the UK. However, I'm back in Australia for a, a few weeks, either side of the New Zealand Test Match show. We, we've got... You know, there'll be a lot of episodes where we're sat next to each other, and that's always preferable. Sure, sure. So this has been a nice run. Yeah. Um, we've and recorded potentially Scotland in May. We we may be in the same. Yes, place. that's mm. true. Scotland in May for the Edinburgh Half Marathon. In fact, why don't I just mention that off the top that Lords Tabs, thirty grand target, ambitious target, more than thirty runners, uh, for whatever reason, extremely high demand this year in Edinburgh. It's a fabulous weekend there. Um, be part of it. Get in touch as soon as you can with Jeff or me or anyone for that matter. Hayley Fuller is running the fundraising on our Discord channel, but you don't need to be a patron to participate. Um, mm. We'll include, include you in the WhatsApp group. You'll be you'll be pounding the pavement with all of us. Izzy Westbury is committed to doing the full marathon because that's just what Izzy does. Yep. Um, so you can um, do that with her if you see fit. Many sign people up. Doing... Try, try to fill the spots before I can sign up. You I know, think we've signed you up. Yeah. I think with, uh, without you knowing about it, you've been signed up to the 10K. Uh, you and Abs are going to run that together. It's extortion. Uh, so that's all thanks to the Lords Tabs who did great work into their 74th year of operation. What an organisation. If you like what they do, you can uh, uh, learn about them in our, in our show notes. And David Gower, of course, our interview with him uh, before Christmas, back when I was mm-hmm. in the UK, that had a lot of stuff about the Tabs in it as well. Uh, I've just taken the kids to the cafe for our final breakfast. So mm-hmm. if I've been here for 50 days, that means Winnie's had uh, 50 baby chinos with a marshmallow. So how she'll have to break the... This is this is going <laughs> to um, reflect the fact that you have two children and I am researching a vasectomy. Um, 
<laughs> what is a baby chip? I've oh, never mate. even known what one mate, is. It's flavoured milk with a marshmallow on top, right? Oh. And she doesn't okay. even really want the milk. She just knows that it's extortion. It's in order to get an early morning marshmallow. Right. It's like with all things kids. You say you won't do these things. You say you won't allow them to become dependent on iPads and so on. And you yeah. just kind of... We're going to keep them away from refined sugar and screens. <laughs> yeah. Good fucking luck. It's just impossible. We've tried our very best. She's nearly four. Oh, yeah. Um, we've given it a red hot go. But, you know, some things have just accepted and banked in now. And yep. that's one. So if she's had 50... The downside of that is that... Well, we had our Sydney live show only not even two days ago. Mm-hmm. feels a lot's happened since we interviewed yeah, Nick did. Hockley at the SCG yesterday. That's also in the feed if you're interested in all things cricket administration. And his backstory as well, which I don't think many people knew a lot about his backstory. So mm. we've given you a good, hopefully a good overall picture of where Nick Hockley fits in. I can't in. wait till we do the Jay Show one to round out the big three. <laughs> we, we had Richard Gould, we had uh, Nick Hockley, and I'm sure that Jay will be more than willing to, to line up to tell us his, his relatively brief backstory <laughs> it'll have to be, for a man of 19 or whatever he is. It'll have to be over here because we're not getting a visa into India anytime soon. Uh, certainly not uh, as things stand at the moment. So we, we've, we've, we've had a nice time in India. We've always enjoyed going there. I don't anticipate being let back in there for we've been too critical of the BCCI and that's just the way these things go. Um, yeah, so uh, 50 baby chinos for her, but only one hard solo for me. I've been oh, scouting yeah. the hard solos. Mm. Uh, I'm glad it was um, uh, Dave of Mark Latham, uh, Dirty Potley shirt fame, who yep. um, was in my presence after the live show when we saw the hard solo on, on tap, tap. And I was able to finally set this straight. Yep. Um, low on fizz, so you can slam it down fast. Mm-hmm. And you, you, your kayaking really picked up after <laughs> that, I've got to say. <laughs> they should come on board. If you run hard solo out there, if hard solo is your brand, we are the right people to promote it in the same way that we're the right people to promote flavoured milk. Um, but yeah, so the Sydney live show was an absolute hit. We packed out the comedy store, full national tour last year. We've got a mini show in Adelaide. We've had some yep. messages asking about that, Jeff. You're doing that with yes, Baz. Yeah, the 19th, I think the okay. 19th of January, the Friday night. It's during the test. It's a live story time. It's me and Barrett Sundarais and it's at the Arkaba, which I've been firmly instructed oh, yeah. you must pronounce that way because I think I said Arkaba. I didn't didn't know how to do it anyway. Yep. Um, so the Arkaba is 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 a is a, an Adelaide institution. They've got a um, a sports bar that they've renovated up in there. So they've invited us along. Great. Um, so we will Barrett and I will record a daily show at the ground, <laughs> then head to the pub and do a live story. Have time. you considered? I mean without wanting to piss on your cornflakes mm. here, doing a story time show with Brat um, might throw any... Oh, yeah, it's going to be one number each. <laughs> I was going to say, you have to be mindful of the way he treats his story time answers. I know I'm sort of... Uh, I'm throwing stones in the glass house sure. there. I've, I've gotten along with my answers as well, but Brats yeah. are a, their own thing, aren't they? I'm trying to figure out if we can do a kind of tripod song in an hour thing of doing a live <laughs> one. Like, can we get someone to... Can we get numbers from the crowd before a break and then solve it in the break? I don't know if we can do that so That'd be fun. But yeah? it'd be... If, if we could figure out the logistics, it'd be nice to give it a go. If you had a pretty good steer on the clue, yeah. I think that's the Key thing. A free well, I, th- hit I think be- it would just be a free. Have to be yeah. a free hit number. Have to be like a list of free hit numbers, and we pick out one that we like out of the list and do that. Okay. Something like that. Okay. All right. Could well, work, I'm, I'm sad know. not to be there, for I am living home mm. uh, after living alone for so many years. Um, Life was never good. That was played uh, last week, wasn't it? When we were at um, when we were at finishing school with yeah. Andy Andy Mack, and so they um, that was that was an exciting. I think they you could really you out. could really see how old we are. Mm. I mean, a lot of people at that night were old. This is finishing school institution in Melbourne, where mm-hmm. they skewed their New Year's Eve show. Um, to parents and to people of, of a certain age where they said, no one can get a babysitter on New Year's Eve, so we're doing New Year's Eve on the 29th instead. Mm-hmm. Why don't everyone come? And we were probably the median age. Yeah, we all celebrated December 30 uh, at midnight. <laughs> Happy December 30, the big night. Works um, well. Yeah, and, and Jeb and I did get a run. Uh, right, so uh, let's get into the main part of our discussion today. So uh, we're only a couple of days away from finding out the Aussie squad for the Windy Series, which means the opener debate will be finally put to bed. Mm-hmm. I think a fair bit's happened here since the Test match. So Cameron Bancroft's comments or the interview with Cameron Bancroft a couple of days ago at the end of the Test match before he played a Big Bash game, I thought was really weird. Like He was asked questions about whether it would be appropriate, not, not appropriate, that's the wrong word, whether it would be comfortable him slipping back into that dressing room right. given everything that's happened and his interview in, what was it, December 2018? It made yeah. your book, didn't it? The, the uh, famous Ang- uh, Bancroft interview with Adam Gilchrist where he implied that the bowlers knew what was going well, on. No, that was a separate interview later. That was like a year later or something oh, like right. that. Whichever the one on Fox... To, no, it, actually much... It was even... It was more recently than that. It was like a year ago or 14 months ago or something from now. Okay. The, Fo- the Fox one... 
The Adam Gilchrist one was pretty, that was the kind of um, softening up, the, that was the PR angle one so that he could, when his ban was about to end on December 26th or 27th, whatever it was, and he was going to come back and play shield cricket and they did the, uh, you know, you've been away and you've learned a lot, haven't you, mate? You know, you've been to the yoga retreats and um, you're a changed man. I thought uh, that, by the way, for the record, I thought that was all right. Like I thought at the time, yeah, it's a rare interview, you could ask him more questions, but yeah. this guy had been through a fair bit and a few half volleys, he was probably just, uh, he probably had a few a few coming. There, there were there um, were some absolute bullshit answers that got no follow up whatsoever. Yeah, and, and I, yeah, that was more the point for me. But sure. anyway, that that was that was just softening things up. But then yeah, this other interview was much more recent. Okay, it was maybe a year ago, and it was it was along the lines of you know he he made some comment along the lines of. Um, like, what do you really think was going on kind of thing. So there was an implication that, that other others knew about it, which, of course, is what many people believe anyway. Um, and well, Usman Khawaja has hinted at that himself, yeah, having and, been there that day about yeah. collective responsibility that well, he was he pushing just, for. Yeah. His, his, his version was, you know, that he thought the best response would have but just been to take collective responsibility yeah. and, and do it as a team, which has some merit for it as well. Um, but in any case, like the idea yeah. that Bancroft, who's played so much cricket since mm. the ban ended in... 2019 mm. and has played test cricket. I saw Mitch's column. 20, yeah, his was the very end of 18, wasn't it? Because it was end, that's of, right. end of December. That's right. Yeah. But, he, but nevertheless, he, he returned to the Australian test yeah. side in 19. Yeah. I think that's lost. It's a bit uh, Mandela effect. People have completely forgotten that he played test yeah, cricket again. Actually, yeah. So Mitchell Johnson's column a couple of days ago uh, doesn't... I think he's like missed that bit. And I'm not having a crack at Mitch, by the way. It's just I think a lot of people out there don't remember that Bancroft actually did get returned or recalled mm. to the Aussie Test Briefly, team yeah. and was wrongly dropped. Like the, yeah. He gutsed it out at Lords in tough circumstances and they and they went to Marcus Harris for the third test. He was on a bit it of a hiding... Yeah, he was on a bit of a hiding to nothing um, before he sort of conquered the moving ball in English conditions, which I think he's done a lot of good work on playing for, well, Leicestershire, then Gloucestershire in the mm. last four summers. So um, that's part of it too, but they're not going to England anytime soon. The debate feels live. Um, there was a little hint from Andrew McDonald about the Smith thing, though. So since we've last had a conversation about this, Steve Smith, oh, we might have talked about it briefly on day four on The Daily Show. Smith is out there saying he's keen to do it. McDonald said that Smith's been talking to him about opening for a number of weeks. This isn't sort of like, mm. you know, as we joked, we've been talking about it on the podcast. Pete Lawler's written an article, Smith, he's read it, and, you know, now he's interested. This is sort of something, a conclusion he's arrived at. And I'm like... I feel uh, happy for Smith that he's had that thought process that mm. he's because my instinct was that uh, he'll feel so uncomfortable changing the status quo. It's been so long since he's batted four. He wouldn't want to be taken out of his comfort zone. I think sometimes we use a bit of kidology with Smith. Yeah. Uh, and instead, he's the one who's on the front foot thinking about what might be, to use his words, one final challenge in his test mm. career. Whether they do it or not, they might, they might not. It's more that I admire Smith for believing and understanding that there might be more to him than what he's been in the past as he reaches a different stage of his career. And and it's been diminishing returns at four over the last few years as yep. well. So there might be that too if, if things like, yeah, I mean, I think people forget that he made a, an Ashes Test winning 100 at Lords and, yeah. and, and World, Test, World Championship Test Championship final. final as well. So he was always good in London. Steve Smith, his, his tour of London numbers are very high. But... Um, you know, overall, there've been a lot of those middling kind of scores. He makes a lot of those thirties or whatever it is, and um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it freshens it up. But then Cummins, in his press after yeah. the test, pushed back on it quite hard and said, "You know, I'm, I'm not. I don't think that's the way to go. To have someone who's not." Grooved as an opener coming in to do that job, it's the specialist position, um, and he kind of said, you know, not playing the rule in rule out game, but his his instinct was that that's not what he wanted to do. So it comes down to George Bailey, and that's why he gets paid the you know the moderately big bucks, right? Like this is actually his job. So and Tony Dodder made. Let's not count our yep. daughters in this. They've got, they've got a big decision to make, uh, and how they do it. Um, there's no perfect answer. There's no dreadful answer. Whoever they go with. Even if it's Cam Green, outside chance it'll be Green now. But if they are desperate to get Green back and they don't want to go the Smith shuffle model, then mm. the only place he can fit right now is opening. Even if it's Green, he might be fifth in the depth chart as we think of it right now. I don't think that's a bad, bad outcome either. They've got two tests against the Windies to um, make the most of the situation, shall we say, at home. Uh, two tests in New Zealand on what's likely to be. They'll look green. We know the pitchers will look <laughs> green. They'll do a bit for half an hour, but they'll be dead deadish uh, tracks. They tend to be over there these days. And then quite a long time before they play India at home. So, yeah, 
anyway, there, there's there's a whole bunch of options. None of them perfect. None of them dreadful. Australia are topping the World Test Championship chart, Jeff. I just thought that was worth dropping in here. They've overtaken India on uh, on match ratio, as it was known in the 1993 AFL season. So um, Australia at 90, uh, 56%, India at 54%, having uh, gone one all in, in South Africa. Relatively small sample size for India. Australia have played eight of their WTC tests already. Five of those in England, three against Pakistan. But it does mean if they... Um, beat the Windies 2-0 as we expect they will, they'll start to, I wouldn't say they've got one foot in the final, but they'll have certainly um, recovered the losses of Mm. the points they lost, the penalty points during uh, the, now what was that, during the Leeds test, the Manchester test, whichever one it was, where they had all up 10 points deducted for slow over rate. So they'll have effectively made that up in, in the space of five home test matches. And that's the goal now, isn't it? I've seen the World Test Championship cop a bit of shit online, in the last few days, Mark Butcher, who I have an enormous amount of respect for, by the way, I think he's one of the uh, the most well considered, thoughtful uh, members of the commentariat. But um, but his view is that it, the World Test Championship is devaluing series. He he liked it better when the series was the most important thing, mm. and the World Test Championship spreads the value out across two years and makes each individual series less meaningful. I don't share though? that view I, because it, it's the cumulative effect of the series. Like that's yeah. that's. They're the same thing. It's the the significance of the series is then added to a greater a subsequent significance series. again. So every series is significant. I mean, w- what it does, what it has done, as we've talked about ad nauseum, is baked in that two test model. But you know that was already there. But you know, in sure. order for teams to tick off their obligations and get their two test series in, um, but the significance of those of, of each match in a two test series is more elevated than in a five test series because you've only got those two opportunities to bank the points. Yeah, quite right. So the fact that Australia lost two test matches out of their eight so far has less of an effect because it was yeah. within a five game series. Yeah. Um, and it also informs Australia playing the big three quicks at Adelaide and Brisbane. They've they've shown their cards here. They've said oh, they're going to play them all the way through because yeah. I, I don't think if, if we were in the pre West World Test Championship world mm-hmm. era. I'm pretty sure they would have done a bit of R&R with a view to New Zealand and just generally speaking to blood someone, like using these test matches. I can easily see a world Mm. where, I mean, Stark got left out of the Australian test side 11 times in three years when he started his career. And a lot of it was in situations. never played more than two in a row. Two in a row. And a lot of it was situations like this, like, right, you've played three, you're you're, you're freshen up for one here. And Stark slash Hazelwood could have missed one each against the Windies, but it's pretty clear they're going to play all the way through and leave nothing to chance to maximise the points in Mm. in the World Test Championship context. And that's also to do with the relative age of the bowlers um that thing where you've got younger bowlers and you want to look after them for stress fractures and all the rest of it you know all, all of australia's quicks are in their 30s now their bodies are basically made of you know asbestos and gristle <laughs> you know they're just they're just gnarled beaten physical specimens who um, can't suffer any further damage and and there is this kind of obsession with with cricket people where it's always about what's next what's next what's next who's coming up who's coming through the ranks development are we do we have a succession plan who are we grooming to be the next in line and so on um in order and like okay so the point of that is to develop a really good player right that's the whole point that's that's the the end goal is to have a player who is really Mm. good at it for a period of time when you've got them you've already got them like you have to give them the opportunity to play. You have to you have to let you've you've developed these players. You've got to let them do the thing that they do um, while they've got the scope to do it. And they're all there. They're all fit. We know how um, how random that can be. We've seen all the injuries Hazelwood's had over the last few years, for instance, and the amount of cricket that he's missed and the frustration of that. Um, you can't take it for granted. It's so rare for fast bowlers to be fit, and and we've seen that with the stats of like bowling groups that have played together. Um, there is there. There are so few, you know, that that sort of all-time West Indies attack played six tests together. Um, the the McGrath, Gillespie, Lee, Warren attack played was it sixteen, something like that. I mean, and we think of them as having been around for years and years and years together. And they were they played those tests over a number of years, but there was always someone missing. One of the four was always injured or off somewhere else, or two of the four, and they were so rarely together. And and these four, these three fast bowlers plus Lyon, have been together for what twenty seven, twenty eight test matches now nobody else has done that. That's more than anyone in test history. And I think you've got to give them the opportunity to play as many together as they can. Why not enjoy the fruits of the the investment that's been made earlier? Yeah, I think that's completely fair. The only bit I'd add is that the way they stagger their retirements is going to be really important because what you don't want is three 
new fast bowlers yeah, coming in. So, and that's going to be compl- complicated by the fact that, um, that Hazelwood and Stark might be right on. The, I know Hazelwood's yeah. younger than Stark, but Hazelwood's body, for whatever He's had reason, more problems re- recently. More recently, so it's been you wouldn't the want, most durable in the world, really, the last few years. You wouldn't want those two to walk off within six months no. of each other. I'd expect that Jai I think natural be, attrition will take care of that. It though, right? should do. It should do. Cummins should stay on and lead the attack for a couple of years, well and truly, yeah. um, after the other two have finished up, whenever that happens to be. But even Stark, you know, I, I might have said during the Ashes, I probably did, that he was entitled to finish up as a Test player whenever he saw fit, given how much he's given to the Test team and the sacrifices he's made financially by not playing in the IPL. Well, you know, I know that's maybe not as cut and dry as we put it sometimes. His reputation has grown outside of T20 circuit land. And now he's um, yeah, he probably with made all of contracts. that money back. Um, he might in the have contract he got this year. He, he might have probably not as much, but still, your point, your yeah. point's fair. It's but the, it's the back ended. It's the Buddy Franklin ten year yeah, back ended yeah. contract. The Alistair Lynch ten year yeah. contract. But the, but I think, based on what Stark's saying, he might be thinking, well, I don't know, four four hundred Test wickets. Mm. Mm, what about five hundred? Four yeah. more years. It's might improbable. go back to England at thirty eight. Yeah, it's improbable. But he might yeah. go, oh, if I can get, the, I'm only sixty away from four hundred. So what? I'm one hundred and sixty away from five hundred. Am I? Mm. What? So four more years, five more years. Yeah, you can see. Or my, I guess the overarching here is that Stark's not retiring anytime soon. No. I think we thought he might. He's not going to. So it could be Hazelwood, who is the first to yeah. um, to see. So now. yeah. Anyway, that'll be the decision uh, for George Bailey as well to make sure they don't have three players walking off at the same time as they did at Sydney. Yep. Uh, 40 years ago, uh, and as they did at Sydney in 2007 as well. 